in episode 0.2, I'm going to be teaching you how to use Unity and I'm going to be showing you guys the interface. Hello guys, it's Crypto Grounds here. Welcome back to another Unity Idle Game tutorial video. This is the 2021 edition. I hope you guys are all doing great. If you learned something new and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on those notifications for future videos and live streams. Anyways, let's just jump right into Unity. So this is what Unity will probably look like for you if when you first installed it. So last video, I showed you how you could change stuff around, you can move things around. However, I'm actually gonna provide you guys my layout in the description below. So how will you guys add my layout? So you go out to default right here, click down on it and load layout from file and you just download the file in the description and you can load it right in and it'll look just like mine. But you can also change some other presets as well such as two by three, four split, stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own. So this is what you see generally. So you have the hierarchy, scene, game, the asset store, which is where you get asset stores, and you won't really need this anymore, so we can actually just close this tab. You have the inspector, where you can modify your objects. You have your project directory here. This is where all your assets will go. And you have a console here. So let's customize it the way I did it, manually. So what you can do is just drag the hierarchy to the left side, like this, because I like to have my hierarchy from left, uh, like right next to the inspector. And I'm gonna drag my game down here. Okay, and I'm gonna drag the console here and the project here as well. Oh, we might have to drag it down here actually, like that. There you go. So you just play around with it until you get what you like. And also to get the animation tab, you click on this three dot, hover over add tab and add animation. And here you can make animations, which I might show somewhere in the series. And also another thing you're gonna really need is the animator tab which you won't need to later on in development, but here you can do the same thing. Click the three dots, add tab, and oh, there's no animator, okay? So now that I can show you something new. You can access special panels in here by heading to the window, and you can go to animation, and there's animator. And you add that, and it should add to automatically to where the scene is, like this. So this is where you control your animation flow. You can also access a bunch of stuff here, um, if you want to manage like audio mixers, uh, you can just have a sprite editor as well. You can do so much with the user interface here. So play around with it if you want. Um, your setup may not look like mine, but you can do whatever you like. So the next thing I think I should show you guys is how to change the resolution. Because right now it's free aspect. So that's basically when you adjust this, the camera is going to change as well. So how to do this? Well, just click on free aspect and you may have a few preset resolutions for you. And actually, these are kind of new. I've never seen these before. But in case there isn't any, all you gotta do is just click the plus right here and just add a, a resolution. So such as like 1080p, that would just be 1920 by 1080. And you can click OK. And there you go, you have a 1080p resolution and it stays regardless if you stretch this window or not. Okay, so now we have the resolution set. Let's actually start learning how to use stuff here. So let's start with the scene here. So Click and hold is for selecting things, which I honestly have never used before. Uh, middle mouse button is to drag like this. Right click is also, or yeah, right click is the, also the same thing. Zoom in is as expected. And if you hold down shift while trying to drag it, it drags uh, two times faster. That's what it seems like. It drags much faster. Whee. So that's pretty much the most important things that you need to know about the scene. Next, let's talk about the hierarchy. So here, right now, we are in our sample scene, which is the auto-generated scene that you get when you create a project, and it has a main camera here. Now, we're gonna be setting up this camera settings once we add a canvas, which will be the next episode. And so this is where you edit your camera here in the inspector, okay? So if you click on the main camera here, you can change any values in here as you wish. You can even change the background color of the camera. So I'm gonna make it red. Maybe, you know, let's make it green. A dark green like that, maybe blue like that. I like that. So yeah, all I gotta do is to, in order to edit the camera, you can either click on the camera itself or you can just click on the main camera in the hierarchy. And there you go. You can change all your values here. So next is the game view. You don't really do much here, honestly, except for mess with the values. So scale is where you just zoom in and out. You have, uh, I've honestly never used a displays here, so I'm not gonna explain what that is because I honestly don't know. Uh, again, you can change the resolution here. 
you can maximize on play. So that's basically where it goes full screen. So if we play it, it'll go full screen on play. And if you press pause here, it'll just back out of here. Speaking of what these are, basically this is the play button here to play our game. This is the pause button. And this is the step. So you can basically just run one single frame if you wanted to in pause mode. Obviously, it's not going to be as useful as you may think, but you can literally skip for individual frames if you like to, which could be kind of funny, I guess. Um, you can mute the audio from anything. Uh, you also have some stats here, such as like FPS, how much C uh, FPS, how much CPU is being used, all that good stuff. Also, your current resolution and stuff like that. And Gizmos, I've actually never used this before, but I'm pretty sure here you can just toggle certain uh, components manually, I believe so. And your project here. So I personally don't like this layout as much. Some people may prefer it if they want the big icons, but if you wanna change this layout, just click the three dot and you can switch between one column layout or two column layout. I prefer one column layout just because I'm more used to what things look like and where things are. But if you wanna start with the two column layout, go ahead, it's your choice. I'm just showing you how to change it. So here's the console. This is where you'll see a bunch of errors and stuff if you ever mess up your code or something. So you want to, want to keep a good eye on this because if you run into any unexpected errors in your development phase, you're going to want to know what's happening and you can see the stack trace and stuff. So the stack trace is where it basically tells you where the error is coming from. And it'll give you a bunch of blue underlined locations. You can click on those and it'll bring you to the code. And I'm sure we'll have to experience that at some point throughout the series. Animation, as I said before, you just create animation. Um, I'm not going to get into details at all with this animation thing just because it would take quite a long time. So if I ever get to that in the series, I'll definitely show you guys. Okay, so next let's talk about some of the controls here. So here, this is the hand tool. So basically if you select the hand tool, it's the same thing. You can drag with left, right, middle. You're basically just dragging the canvas. Obviously, I don't think I've ever had to use that manually just because you can right click and it will automatically switch to this temporarily until you let go. Uh, this is the move tool. So this is where you move things like this, up, down, left, right. And this blue square, you can just drag it wherever you'd like. I'm just gonna put it back where it was. Okay, and then we have the rotate tool. So you can rotate like this. You can rotate like that along the different axes, stuff like that. And this is the scale tool. So you can basically just change the scale here like this, uh, you can't change the scale of the camera, kinda, but I have personally never had to use the scale tool since I can just manually change the scale here. But if you wanna make things bigger in your user interface, you pretty much just wanna use the rec tool. So I'm gonna be using this probably 95% of the time. The rec tool is where you can just basically, it selects your object, like a text for example, as a box, and you can just change the size of it by dragging its corner. So you guys will pretty much see if this is highlighted, that's what I'm using. This one also has um, rotate, scale, and move all combined. And this one is, I guess these are just custom tools that you, oh, editor tools? Okay, I guess you can just make custom ones, which would be kind of cool. I've never had to do that though. So here, uh, I don't think I've ever had to actually mess with the pivot and the center settings, but these just basically change how rotating objects work. So in order to actually create stuff, we have to create game objects. So how do you do that? Well, you can either right click on the on the sample scene right here and you can just go to game object and you can do like create empty. This will create an empty game object. You can go to UI and create a text, text match pro or text or image and it will create this automatically. We're not gonna set this up now because I'm gonna show that later on. But you can also do is click this plus here and you can just do create a, uh, let's create a image like that and it'll create an image. Obviously there's more steps into this and it's automatically gonna create a canvas for you if you don't have one already. However, we're gonna be doing that in the next episode. As I am editing the video, I totally forgot to show you guys one really important thing. And that is adding components such as scripts to your game objects. So here, I have my main camera selected. Actually, you know what, let's just create an empty game object here. Okay. So again, we had to click that plus and then create empty and now we're here. So in order to add a script or create a script or just any component to your game object, such as like image, all I gotta do is click this add component and here you have a list of all the components possible. So let's just say I wanna add an image. Okay, so you just search up image. Oops, excuse me for my all caps. 
click on it, and there you go, you have an image. Obviously, it's not going to look that well because this is supposed to have a canvas, but again, I will show you guys the correct steps when we actually start putting this all together. But I'm just showing you how to create a component. If you type in a name such as like main script here, you automatically have an option called new script. So you can create a new script from here and then just do create and add. Another way to create a script is by going into your project here. I'm going to go to one column layout and just clicking on this plus here. Oh, I don't know what it did there. Okay, you click the plus right here and you can create a new C-Chart script. You can create tons of stuff here. You can create prefabs, which is like a pre like a group of objects that you can just duplicate easily. You can create shaders, you can create you can create audio mixers, materials, you can create animations in here, animator controllers, which is what I was showing you here, the animator. You can create tons of stuff here. You can even create folders. So let's just create a folder such as like scripts here, scripts. And in here, you can right click this folder, go to create, and then C sharp script. And then this is where I'll create our script. Obviously, we're not gonna do that because again, I'm gonna do this in the future. So yeah, anyways, if this video was helpful, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on the bell for future notifications for videos and live streams. I just wanna give a huge shout out to all my YouTube members and Patreons out there. I appreciate your guys' support very much. And if you guys are curious and wanting to join that, if you want to join as a YouTube member, hit that join button below. And if you join my Patreon, it's in the description below. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day and night. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.